Hello, dear friends, and welcome to the second part of in-depth tutorial to Mountain Blade Warband. In this video, we are going to be dealing with a early game. Your first priority should be to get stronger, both by acquiring uh, more money, uh, better soldiers, and uh, recruiting companions or heroes, whatever you might, might call them. I'm going to show you all the different ways that you can achieve that, because this is a sandbox game, so there are different ways you can go about achieving those three major goals in the beginning. First, let's talk about the quests. Uh, quests in towns are usually not worth it because there's a lot of tracking quests where you need to track a band of um, bandits which might be on the other side of, uh, of the map so I feel it's not worth it or like this when you need to escort a caravan to some town which is on the other side of the map the village quests are a little bit more worth it I feel it because um, they usually don't involve you yeah, tracking all across the map they're local apart from money and experience increase you get also increased relations with the a town or a village that you did quest for and it's a lot more beneficial to have high relations with, uh, with villages than with towns because in a later game in a late game you g can recruit a lot and are better recruits from villages in towns you just get better prices and that's it I don't feel it's very important here I'm playing with um, my trader or such a girl and I just went to nearest city also visiting near villages on the way and I recruit uh, my second companion. In the beginning I usually go for um, visiting every single town in the, on the map to get all the companions that I want to. All companions have one other companion that they like and two others that they dislike. So you have to manage uh, your companion morale because if they have more people that they hate in the party they will leave your party you can have a stable party of eight companions you should decide pretty early or even before you start playing what kind of group of companions you will get get i'll have a, a link in the description box about that now since i'm going from town to town i might as well trade i usually trade on the way you need to know what kind of goods to get I I already know uh, pretty well what I want but I will have a description I link into description box and uh, to a detailed guide on trading in cool in this town Kuraf usually you buy iron cheaply this time it, was, it wasn't so cheap, so I decided against it. As you can see, I've got a cattle quest from the gold master of this town. I'm not going to do that quest even if I need to take those cattle to the city that I'm going next. Because it's just too much bother. One of the most lucrative, lucrative um, quests that you can get in the beginning is from the lords that give you that ask you to collect taxes from the fiefs and I'm gonna collect taxes from this town for Boyar Naldera you just press collect taxes and wait and eventually people will start voicing their disagreement but you 
you can stop collecting or continue. I choose to continue and I get 6,000 dinars from, the, from this quest and I spend them on my own gear. When you talk with the same lord next time, he will ask for his taxes, but you can just refuse to return him money. He will become very angry at you, but it's just one lord, so it's up to you. You will need lords later in the game, so it's not smart. It would not be smart to piss off uh, a large number of lords, but you can do to a few. Now here I'm near the river check, and I I decide that I am going to take some small bands of uh, sea raiders. They are the best, uh, the strongest bandits. Uh, but first I buy some sword uh, because I'm not, I feel I don't feel very comfortable with going into fight with just a staff. So I, t I attack a group of eight, and as usual, I leave my low-level troops behind, and I'm going by myself to thin out their numbers. I target the archers first because they do most damage to me, and they would do most damage to my troops. Um, all the uh, infantry troops, I can lead them around, but the uh, Archers are not so easy to fool. They start shooting at you or at your troops. Uh, here I make a few mistakes because I let this guy uh, damage my horse very badly. And I do very little damage to him because I'm just too low level and I'm not going at full gallop while slashing at him with uh, my sword. And I think there's the last uh, archer and once the, the AI run out, runs out of any throwing weapons or, uh, or arrows or they don't have any archers anymore, you can just make a shooting gallery out of them. The uh, shields are a bit annoying but you can always shoot in their legs because they don't have a very good shield, these sea raiders. So it doesn't cover the whole body, not the legs at least. So I can just continue shooting them until I run out of arrows. When I run out of arrows, I tell all my troops to charge in and I also catch one sea raider out of the group. If you want to charge a group of uh, raiders when they are bunch up, bunched up like that, you will probably lose your horse, especially if your horse is so damaged as was mine. But then my other troops just surround them. That's why it's a good idea to get attention on yourself uh, because when they are concentrated on you your troops can get behind them and clobber them now you see I got a pretty good gear and I can upgrade immediately also I have I, I've got um, a lot of experience and I can upgrade my troops it's a good idea to fight sea raiders even if they are the best uh, bandits, the toughest bandits, because the loot and experience, and experience is worth it. Now I upgrade my uh, troops, give my companions new gear, and then continue. Here I'm, I got swarmed by lots of bands of sea raiders. I don't think I can take them, so try to run away. If you are in this situation, try to look for any lords and run towards them and then sea raiders will just abandon the chase after you. I continue and I come up to Verchek and of course the usual drill, visit the tavern, look what's for sale, 
in Virtuek, usually there's a a good uh, the, you can find a good price for uh, salt which is usually around 150 uh, by the way the iron price is also a good price for iron is also 150 and you can sell them both for 250 or so the um, the quest is also doesn't doesn't interest me in this town I start sending off my companions on the quest quests to get um, support for my claim uh, for the throne it's it's a preparation for late game because if you start your own kingdom without uh, a lot of right to rule you get a uh, the other kingdoms will just declare war all declare war on you and it's a bad thing especially if you're playing on harder difficulties and now you see my party is starting to take shape I've got the most important skills covered that's surgery wound treatment first aid spotting pathfinding those are the most important ones and usually I put my my surgeon my wound treatment guy in a separate group support group which I always leave out of the fighting on the battlefield I also have him on the in the last place on the party roster so that he would not come to bandit layers or things like that I'm still checking up with all the gold masters in all the towns that I visit and I come across this quest with uh, troublesome bandits which is probably the only quest that I don't mind doing which involves tracking because it spawns a bandit group just outside the city where you took the quest in this case I had a low spotting skill and it was night time so I couldn't see them so I needed to run around a bit and I failed this quest because somebody else took care of that band of bandits which is unfortunate but it's not that big of a deal now I continue my way and I this is the good example why you should visit the villages on your way because you can get a, a, some goods for very very cheap like this grain for just seven dinars I visit um, another town and the usual do the usual drill visit tavern visit the marketplace and go to the guild master and I found another quest which I don't mind doing which is escorting caravan to the city that I'm going to anyways you just talk with the caravan that spawns near the city and just go straight for the uh, target town where you should escort them to which in this case happens to be Cherise which I was planning to go anyways so it's on my way you just talk again with them and get experience and some money the experience is pretty good as you see most some of my companions leveled up now this is the one of the fights that is characteristic pretty much in the early game for me I fight the step bandits which are all on horse uh, the step bandits and the desert bandits are all on on the horseback so you should avoid them in the beginning but now I feel pretty confident that I can take take them on as usual I run uh, on my own and just lead most of them into a chase uh, you should avoid uh, trees when you fight this kind of bandits when they're all mounted because if you get stopped by a tree you're pretty much dead and just I just round around ride around and shoot them as usual some of them uh, manage to peel off from the group and go after my guys I, s I just tell them to charge and 
because the they are already uh, the bandits are already in disarray so it shouldn't be too hard to take care of them I didn't lose any troops, just four guys wounded, which is always good. And um, always making sure that the best troops are at the top of the uh, party roster screen. And the uh, guys with the special skills are at the bottom. Now the best town for trading is by far Tulga, where you can get uh, spices and salt for cheap um, 500 600 is a good price for spices because the, you can sell them for eight, 800 now I can you can spend the old money from that you acquired from selling loot fr from bandits uh, quest money and money that you made from trading by uh, buying a product, uh, some sort of productive enterprise in a city. You can ask at, uh, how much they cost at the guild master of that city. You can have just one production in any given city. Usually the best one is uh, Dye Works, which I bought for 10,000 dinars. It's also the most expensive one, but it gives you like 1,000, in this case 1,000 dinars per week, so it pays off just after a few months. Now I continued with this character, just going and trading uh, from Rivercheck to Kuraf, Kudan, uh, from Kudan to Ikamu and then to Tulga. Uh, from Tulga I proceeded, I usually proceed either way, either from to the left and um, to through Nara, Halmar, Kuba, and then reach Akhmerat or just go to the right just straight for Akhmerat and then go back through Durkuba and to Tulga again and just repeat this pattern because it's not only the best goods are there but you can hunt the most the toughest bandits on this route, like desert bandits, step bandits, tiger bandits, and uh, sea raiders. And that's basically what I did with that character. Now, let's jump off to the next character, which is my warrior guy. This is where we left him off. He's pretty weak right now. I need to go and recruit some guys. By the way, if you are traveling vast distances you can speed up time by holding control and space in the beginning when you have a, a in your army lots of recruits and generally weak troops you can visit uh, training fields that are scattered around the map to speed up this their recruitment you just select sparring match with one of them and just proceed to knock them out which is pretty much the same as an arena. If you go to that arena, you shouldn't have any problems. You repeat the same thing th three times, then a little time passes, and you can upgrade your troops, usually one or two at a time. It's a very long process, not really worth it. 
for the major training, but still. Now with this character I proceeded to uh, take out the bandit layers. The first bandit layer and the easiest one is forest bandits, which are found in the forests near s between Suno and Uxhal. Uh, you get quests for bandit layers from uh, from a town lord, so you need to find town lords. Uh, for forest bandit layers, it's usually Suno or Uxhal. So uh, you, sh you need to track them down. You do that by asking any character from that faction where they are. You just uh, In this case I asked, I asked Lady in a castle. So I know where those two lords are now. They're on campaign somewhere in Rodok lands. So I'm gonna go and find them and try to get a quest for Banditle, and I find them near Veluka, and I ask for the uh, tasks, and they usually offer you to join as a mercenary, which I refuse. And then Delinard gives me a mountain Banditle quest, which is unusual because mounted Banditlers are usually given by uh, Lord of Veluka or Yalen because those uh, the mountain bandit layers are usually in the this this area here around mountains but this time I think they're near the river somewhere near the river so that's why the Lord of Uxal gave gave the quest for bandit layer because I think the layer is closer to his city and sure enough I find the bandit layer near in the mountains but still near nearer the river than it usually is this is not uh, this happens rarely because, as I said, you need to get a Mountain Bounded Lair quest f um, from the Veluka, usually Veluka, Lord of Veluka. The Mountain Bandits are second toughest bandits, just after the Forest Bandits, so they're not, then nothing really special. You just need to watch out for the hammers, because they can knock, knock you out with one hit on the ground. And sometimes they have um, uh, throwing weapons, which you also need to watch out for. But other than that, it's not that hard quest, really. Uh, forest bandit quests are also not that hard. Uh, desert bandits also. Uh, step bandits. They have some throwing weapons or bows, usually, that you need to be a little bit careful. The toughest bandits are by far the Tiger bandits and Sea Raiders. I'm gonna show the Sea Raider quests also. You get a lot of uh, loot from these quests but that's not the main reason that you should do them. It's actually the experience is very nice from these quests. It's, it's the best way to uh, level up by far your companions, especially your companions. And I get the forest bandit quest from the same lord, Delinard, which is nice. Now, the desert bandits usually are found somewhere between Ahmerat and Durkuba usually in this area and you get this quest usually from the Lord of Akmarad whichever that might be sometimes from the Lord of Durkuba but that that's rare uh, step bandits are usually found around Ikemu uh, sometimes they 
the location of Tele is very obscure, like they might even be behind the mountains or in some unusual place, but it's usually around Ikamu. Usually, most of the times it's around Tilbuk, the village of Tilbuk. The Taiga bandit layers are somewhere around this area. Again, usually, sometimes they're on the other side of a uh, river, somewhere in the south. Or, But you take the quest from the Lord of Kudan, that's almost always the case, very rarely from the Lord of Kurav. And finally, uh, Sea Raider Lair you take from the Lord of River Check, usually, and it's found near the coast. And I'm going to show you how I deal with it. As usual, I just tell my followers to follow to follow me because um, it's easier to deal with uh, separate uh, groups of bandits in one uh, when your troops are in one group. If you let them attack, they usually scatter, and that's almost always trouble for you. When you have a high level companions you can let them go on their own but until then it's in the early game it's usually a lot better to keep in one group When dealing with larger groups of enemies, try to surround them. Even if you're not very good at fighting, you can still act as a decoy, cover yourself with a shield and lead the enemies in a position that your, your troops could flank them and attack them from, the, from behind. Don't be afraid to pick up any shields if you're any other shields are the, on the battlefield if your own shield breaks you don't lose any equipment after the battle you have the same equipment as you have before the battle so there's no reason not to use anything if you on the battlefield if you find any better stuff you still are, will not be able to keep it and that's basically it for the early game uh, you go around trading hunting bandits, doing bandit lair quests, um, leveling up your guys to get a nice party skill spread and acquiring enterprises. Basically, the longer you do this, the easier the late game will become. It, you might also need to do this longer if you're playing on the harder difficulty settings. Anyways, hope you found this helpful and see you next time.